Hey, Next Level Agents, how is it going? Uh, this is Kevin Kaufman, and I am joined today with, uh, by Frank of Viral Marketing. Frank, how's it going today, buddy? Hey, guys. I'm doing great. Thanks for having awesome. me, Kevin. Awesome, Frank. I'm super excited to have you here. Obviously, you and I got to spend some time together recently on a podcast interview where we talked a little bit more about like your personal background and how you kind of came to eventually uh, found viral marketing and and the way you've uh, evolved it through the years. But uh, enough of that stuff. Enough about Frank. Let's actually talk about some marketing and how to make some more money from the folks in our database and how to earn more commissions, which is really what we're all trying to do grow grow bigger better business that is more about people and so you so graciously said I'll come back and do a free webinar no pitch no sale nothing <laughs> let's just let's do it so here we are today man How, how's it going it's going great it's going really well we can uh you know lead costs go up you have more buyers registering on more sites you have uh you know lead portals taking more and more percentage of your commission and for everyone watching today, I'd like to show you how to put you back in control where you have a big asset that you're sitting on that you might not be aware of and it's your database. It's pretty much anyone you've ever communicated with your entire life that has some marginal connection with you. And if we could round those people up and get some communication out to them, let them know that you're in real estate, the joke is that you're not a secret agent, but you're there to help them. Um, you know, especially now in the hot summer months, you know, people will reply back and people will respond to you saying, yeah, I am thinking of buying or selling. And I'll go over some examples and I'll show you exactly how to do that today. So when you're done with the webinar, uh, you can leave it with a quick plan to take and go implement so you can get some listing leads. How's that sound? Dude, that sounds awesome. You and you and I were having a conversation when we were discussing some of the stuff that you'd go over today uh, in regards to kind of like the four steps, right? So like, yep. what are the key points, if you will, for doing this? And that really caught my attention because because when you look at like what someone like yourself does and uh, from a marketing standpoint, sometimes it, you realize like there's a lot of madness, but there's actually a method to the madness, right? You've got some very key points. Yeah, mental models. Yeah. Uh, yeah, mental models. So that's uh, anyone that, start, that knows who Charlie Munger is. He's the business partner to Warren Buffett. And those two famously say that they know they can buy a company in about five minutes with a five minute discussion. They'll know if they're going to buy a giant company because they're able to take very complicated information and distill it into a model that you can hang all these different ideas on a lattice work of theory. So it makes sense in your head. It's kind of like you have all these ornaments, but you need the Christmas tree to hang the ornaments on to make sense of them all. So let me give you that Christmas tree because there's four steps. We talked about it earlier is um, you want to get more commissions from your database. You should probably round up your existing list and reconnect with it. So it's called number one, reconnect. Number two, you need to keep building your list. You need to keep getting permission and contact information at every opportunity uh, from ideally a homeowner that might want to sell their home in the future or refer you. So if that adds your list, call number two, add or build. Number three is you have to touch your list. You have to send them things, a newsletter, videos, updates, community events, whatever. And there's a recipe in a blend that we've found is optimal for time invested and money returned where you're not, you're not going past the point of diminishing returns for energy, effort, and money to get the result. And uh, we'll share that today. And then finally, I, I would probably say the last one's call. You know, you can do all the marketing you want. You can send all the videos and do all the emails and do all the Facebook ads, but someone eventually is gonna have to pick up the phone, unfortunately, which is the hardest part of everything. Right, right. like like eventually it goes back to this, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, conversations. Yeah, marketing is just designed to increase your efficiency rate of the calls. I mean, if you have no marketing, I mean, you have to my call, like, I don't know who knows, like 100 or 200 people you have to slog through to find a deal, right? But marketing is gonna make it more efficient, where in the case of what I'll show you here, um, you only have to call 10 people to get a deal. And those are the numbers that we're seeing that when you send, uh, let's say a video out to your database on you know, the three things you must know before you sell your home this July. <laughs> and you send that out and you get a list of all the people that watch it. Uh, what we find, and these are real stats, um, from, cause we have our own call center now that actually makes these calls on your behalf. So I have real reporting. Uh, the answer rate's about 25%. One in four people actually answer the phone which is really good, all right? And of, if, you, if we speak on average to 10 people, 
that click those links, uh, one person says, yeah, I have the realtor call me back about buying or selling. So it's about a one in 10 conversion rate because marketing makes the calls more efficient. Whereas if you don't have marketing, you still got to make the calls, but there's less efficiency, right? So you're buying efficiency in your calls. So the calls never really go away. So I guess what I'm saying is the last piece, call the people that watch your videos. Again, that's reconnect with the people that watch, reconnect with the people on your list, build your list, touch and communicate with your list, and then make the calls. And, you know, we can talk about, and I love this because we're going to talk about some of the how to do those top three things. I don't know that you, maybe you do, maybe you have a magic potion, Frank, where we can teach number four about how we can make this thing lighter and we can make it so this is easier to pick up and, and actually make those phone calls. Um, but the, the thing of the matter is, is that if we do one, two, and three very, very well, the number four should be easy, right? Like that should be like that <laughs> yeah. number one, we should just kind of want to do it. I, I, I know a guy who's at a mastermind and he calls, he's got a whole course he calls money phone literally because like the phone is where you make your money. Um, and if you get people who, so they're predestined uh, like they're, they're kind of predisposed and ready and warmed up to you already. They're already qualified. Them. They're literally yeah. pre-qualified that they want your phone call and they want to do business with you or refer business to you. Like that's the easiest phone call to make. Is it not? Oh, well, that's a great question. Um, you would think it would be. So l- before we go into these four things, let me take like, a quick tangent because Okay. I have to take this. Let's talk about making the calls to your database. So let's say you send a video out to your list on the three things you must know before you sell your home for the most amount of money this July. Nice title, right? And let's say you get like 50 people back to click it. Well, it's going to be a smorgasbord of people. I mean, it's going to be your friends, family, clients, best clients, leads, right? <sighs> Those are really hard calls to make from a, uh, I don't know, versatility, rejection, what are people going to say standpoint? Um, like what, will they think, what will they think of me? Yeah, like the therapy that's needed to get someone to make those calls is just ridiculous. It's, it's just it's too much. So I, because you're dealing with all these limited beliefs, what are they going to say? It, the human side of it is exhausting. It, you really need, it's like, seriously, therapy has to take place to get those calls made. So here's my recommendation. Ready for my magic pill? I was actually talking to a client about making those calls. Like, look, dude, you, know, you can make like a $10,000 commission on a home sale. All right. All you gotta do is pick up the phone and one in 10 people are going to buy or sell their home. But there were a lot of issues. I don't want to make the calls. I have call reluctance. Therapy issues, right? So I said, look, why don't you just go wait tables instead of making the calls? Seriously, go wait tables, go do something else, go drive Uber. It doesn't make a difference. Go make some money another way that's easy for you. It doesn't have that, that issues. I'm 100% serious. And then hire somebody for $10 now an to make those calls as your assistant because they're not going to have any of the therapy issues because they're just going to make the calls without thinking much about it. And the reality is, is you can hire somebody for, you know, nine, 10, 11, $12 an hour to call your database on behalf of you as your assistant. So for example, Hey Kevin, I'm the executive assistant to Frank Klesitz. I understand that you subscribe to his newsletter. Um, I think he may be a realtor. <laughs> you know who he is. Anyways, I was just calling to invite you to an event. Frank would love to see you there. And while I have you on the phone, Frank wants to know, are you thinking about buying or selling a house? So it. simple. It is simple. And somebody, someone else that doesn't have the issues will just make those calls for 10 bucks an hour and get the result. And that's what we're seeing with the 25% contact rate and the one in 10 by having an assistant call on your behalf. I'd rather just have the agent that would need to go through the therapy that wouldn't even get it done just go drive Uber and give the money to a caller and they would still get the lead. You follow me? It's cheaper that way. Absolutely. (laughs) So that's just, it's a little tangent I want to share, but hopefully that gives you some insight of it's a much more of a human issue to make the calls and there's more of like the the rational what to say issue. Yeah, absolutely. I I think that's obviously, um, and a lot of us, you know, get good at marketing if you will, because we think then we won't have to make the phone calls or take the phone calls, but you actually still have to talk to people Call to, to transact business. So yep. um, awesome. So that, I think that is something we can all resonate with in this industry for sure. And I, with, for you, man, like you've been working with realtors for, for quite some time now. So obviously you, you speak from experience. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, 100%. It's a lot easier for people to call strangers actually than people they know because the, the, getting rejected from a stranger isn't as painful as the potential rejection from someone you know. 
Absolutely. So let's so let's go into that then. Give us some uh, give me some examples. Like um, you mentioned, the like the first key point was yeah, reconnecting, reconnecting, right? Mm-hmm. So tell me tell me more about that. How do I reconnect? What's an example yeah. of that? So let's say for example, you know, you're you're like, man, I should probably like reconnect with my list. So let's kind of figure out what it is. So I'll give you some ideas. This is a good place to start. But um, this is what I would do. Um, this isn't necessarily the, the best answer, but let me just kind of share what I would do in this situation. I would log into my Facebook and pull up and click friends and look at all my Facebook friends. And Facebook's algorithm is crazy. Your best friends will be at the top. So your best people that you know will literally be at the top. And as you scroll through the friends, the, the relationships become looser and looser and looser. It really is crazy uh, of the suggestions. Um, copy and paste it all, print it off, and circle all the people that you want in your database, or it could just be all of them. And then I would pay someone uh, to look them all up and get their contact information. That's a good place to start. The second thing, you do the same thing with your LinkedIn connections. Go log into LinkedIn, pull up your connections, maybe print them off, or you can just export them all if they still let you do that. But the idea would be is you circle people you like, pay someone to look up the contact information. All right. Next thing is you can go through your Gmail contacts or your address book, or your Outlook. Export the whole thing. <laughs> all right. Go through there and be like, all right, maybe I should communicate with all these people or start with the entire thing. If you just want to mail them all, that's fine too. The other option too is go and go to your broker and say, hey, um, I really haven't kept track of any of the homes I sold. I go back through the files and actually look up all my past clients <laughs> and uh, get all that information. You also have anyone that you might have any warm leads in your buyer seller lead generation program that you can export from like your Boomtown, Firepoint, Top Producer, Real Geeks, whatever it may be. Um, and uh, what else? Oh, and your cell phone. A lot of times what integrates with your, with your address book on your email isn't necessarily what's in your actual cell phone. So whatever your contacts are on your cell phone, export all that. So once we go through that exercise, <laughs> It's a pretty, pretty good much, exercise. I would do it with every new agent. I'd like it's the first thing you do. Because when you work on my team, you, you do not get to be a secret agent. That's the joke. Nope, no secret agents here. All right. Yeah, I mean, that makes total sense. So anybody who's going, well, I'm not sure who should be in my database. Like Frank literally just gave you pretty much every idea you could ever need to get as many people yeah. as you would possibly need for your database to really start working your business. I would start there. I mean, you can just grab everybody, you know, and say, look them all up and throw them in there. Or you can spend time and drill it down. But really, it comes to your comfort level. It wouldn't doubt, just throw everyone in there. Because here's what we're going to do. Let me explain. So let's say you have the email addresses of all these individuals, uh, the ones on Facebook or LinkedIn you can't get. You might have to look them up. But there's ways to do that. Spokio, Pipple. Uh, PIPL.com is a wonderful people search engine. You should check it out. P-I-P-L dot com we love that um but let's just say you now have all these spreadsheets of all these contacts of like your entire life sitting on your desktop um i would take all of those uh contacts and upload them to a service uh, like never bounce and what never bounce is going to do is uh i believe they deduplicate the emails they should if not the email program will do it but uh it'll remove all the emails that aren't going to get delivered and are bad and are spam traps, which would be a high percentage of all those emails, if I'm sure you can understand. Totally. So when you download the list back, you know, the emails you have in that list that you want to send a reconnect message out to will be like 100% deliverable. Now, again, if you're a broker or a team leader, if you're listening to this, think about all the databases, <laughs> all the contacts you have access to through all the agents in your office or all the agents on your team. And imagine if you took them through this exercise. And he said, look, let me give you a scrubbed clean list of all your contacts deduplicated for all of you. Now that that value prop, right? Just something to think about. Now, all right, so now we got all these contacts deduplicated, scrubbed, 99% deduplicated, loaded up into, let's say, an email marketing program like Constant Contact. Um, at Viral, we use a service called Emma, which is really good. We really like Emma, E-M-M-A, but they're all good. And now you want to send them an email message that is like the least possible spammy as possible. So it should look like the opposite of spam. And if it's all right, I'd like to maybe dictate what that message would say, Kevin. To I kind think of give you an awesome. idea. Yeah, right? do it. So the subject line would go something like, uh, you know, uh, looking to reconnect or excited to reconnect. And it would say, dear friends, clients, colleagues, 
uh, I'm writing you since we're connected on social media, you're in my address book, or we've done business together, or you're even a current client. And I want to let you know, um, I want to do a much better job of keeping updated what's going on with, in your case, Kevin, you know, Phoenix home values. What you hear in the national media is not necessarily what's going on here. You know, in fact, you're going to see <laughs> a billboard and a radio at every two minutes here about somebody wants to sell your home, <laughs> which is pretty much the case probably now in Phoenix, I could assume, right, Kevin? Guaranteed. Yeah, guaranteed. So anyways, um, I want to do a better job of giving you some insights and information to help you make smart real estate decisions and keep you informed of what's going on in the community. I plan to send you, you know, two helpful Q&A videos a month. They're great. I put a lot of time into them. I think you'll find them useful. But I have no intent of spamming you at all. So if you don't want to hear from me, click unsubscribe at this bottom of the email. You'll, I will never email you again. No hard feelings. But uh, I look forward to staying in touch. However, if you are thinking about selling your home, you can click here and put your home address in to find out what it might be worth based upon your neighbor's home sales. It's a, it's a tool that's free to you that I pay for to figure out what your home value is. It's marginally accurate. I can make it accurate if I actually saw pictures of a house. So call me if you want that. The second, if you're thinking about buying a home, you can click here to search all homes for sale on the Phoenix MLS. Every single home's there. They're all online on my home search site. Check it out. And if you have any questions, let me know. I look forward to staying in touch and just reply to this email if you do want to buy or sell a home right now. I'm here to help. Look forward to keeping you better formed. Kevin, how does that sound? That sounds pretty simple. I think right? pretty much anybody could literally just write down what you just said and click send. Like that wouldn't be too hard. Yep. So you can go back and watch the replay on that. And that will be, um, and that will, uh, that's, you just write that up plain text. So I wouldn't do like, hey, Michael, my son. Um, I wouldn't put any graphics in that. I would literally make that look as plain as possible. And we get that through. Some people opt out, that's fine, but a lot of people reply back. I mean, I want you to really think about the power of what you said there. Is if you're looking for some low cost leads and you need some business now and you have no money, that's what I would do. So would you mind telling me what, what's with the plain text? Why, why the plain text, no graphic or anything? Um, just because it's your first reconnect email. Like these people have never gotten the email from you. And you just don't want any suggestion at all, like on the first one, that it might be commercial in any way. Generally, it, it's kind of the idea where if you're mailing into a, if you're doing direct mail, and you're, and you're sending letters to a homeowner that, um, that doesn't know who you are, you want to go in blind. You wouldn't put your logo on the envelope. You would just put the address. So when they open the envelope, they wouldn't know who it is. It has a higher open rate than it's called sneak up mail <laughs> as opposed to like putting the brand there as a direct mail thing. Um, we just find it's better on that very first reconnect email. Keep it super, super personal. I think we well, actually got a better answer for you on that. The, the goal of the first email is to make sure nobody clicks the report spam link. That's the goal. Fair. Because if they click that report spam link, one out of every thousand are going to shut your email down. So we want to keep that nice and personal. And then from there, we can jazz it up with some graphics and put your videos in there and so on and so forth. And that's good because a lot of people will open the email and get the brand impression, but they won't click through and watch the video. That's all. So, but that's how you reconnect. Okay. So that's a no brainer. That's, I mean, that sounds pretty, it seems like even I could accomplish that. Uh, and I'm not the, I'm not the smartest guy in the room. That's for sure. So, um, okay. So that's your reconnect e email. You also talked about one of the other key points of being about adding, how, adding to your permission based yeah. list. So yeah. how do you do that? Well, so the name of the game in real estate or any direct sale is if there is one key metric. So if you had to, if I were to look at a real estate agent's business or I would look at a team and try to figure out, okay, where are the key drivers? You know, the, the things that you drew, do, do that drive 80% of the result. And I have to really simplify and find the, I have all these things, right? It's confusing hundreds of things I could look at, but what are the two or what are the couple of things I'm going to pull out? Well, the first thing I would pull out is how many people are you speaking to a week about real estate? I really wouldn't care who, I would just say, how many people are you talking to? That's it. So I want you to think for a moment, Kevin, right now, but also when you started about how much money and time and energy and emotion, and I'll call it therapy. <laughs> All right. That's the word I like to use now. It's a little more honest, I think, uh, goes into like getting those calls made right. and actually getting people on the phone. Right. Um, 
let's say it's 20 people a week or 30 people a week. And so, some of these teams, man, it's a thousand people a week across the organization. Um, we need to understand that not all those people are interested in buying a home right now. Duh. Yeah. Or selling their home right now. Duh. So in marketing, if you know that a very small percentage of the audience will take your primary offer, um, what you have to do is, don't you love it when the kids run in? That's my daughter, Melody. Get her, Katie. You can do it. All right. So a very small percentage of the audience will take the primary offer. Right. And make what's called a secondary offer to capture more contact information, more upstream of those people. I feel like that guy on CNN, when like, you know, the kid was. Oh, yeah. That was, that was honestly, that was amazing. Yeah. So the secondary offer would be, hey, by the way, it was great speaking to you. Um, we publish the Phoenix Real Estate Journal newsletter. It's like everything you want to know about what's going on with home prices in the area. It's really good. Kevin, what's your email address? I want to make sure you receive it. Got it? And you can call your newsletter that, the Phoenix Real Estate Journal. We have a client actually, go check it out, uh, SiliconValleyRealEstateJournal.com. He's a viral client. So he's the author and editor of the Silicon Valley Real Estate Journal.com. And he invites people to subscribe to his newsletter. That's what he calls it. Isn't that cool? It's, a, it's actually really brilliant. Yeah. And it gives you, it gives it a little more weight, right? To like, I publish this too, by the way, what's your best email address? It's full of these tips and insights about what's going on in the market. Here's the deal. About a third of the people you offer that to on cold calls will take it. Okay, sure. Here's my email. I would say if you could get about, you know, three out of 10 people to say, yeah, here's my company information. That's really good. Now, here's the math. Let me just give you some simple, simple math. Let's say that you're just going to Neanderthal this thing. No marketing. Here's a phone. Here's a script. And pound out calls nonstop all day long till death do you part. All right? Which certainly will work. And in many respects, that's good advice. Right. <laughs> it, it really is in a lot of okay. ways. Okay. Let's just make this thing real simple. You know, you'll speak to three people a day. I give you their email address. It will happen. That's 15 people a week, 60 people a month, or 720 people a year. And if you know the stats on like how many people you need in your database to get a deal, seven, you only need, I mean, like 720 people, um, you, know, uh, uh, you know, is good for about 72 deals. It's about a 10% rule. So the 10% rule, I mean, Mike Ferry teaches that, and, you know, Gary Keller, Keller Williams has a different conversion rate, but it's kind of around there. Like a list of 720 people working that there's probably about 70 deals sitting on that list, either by them buying or them referring. If you can connect with them enough and we're going to go into the touch plan with that. And that's pretty powerful. And the way you get off the transaction treadmill of having to pound phones all the time to strangers, having to prove yourself to, over, 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 and over, and over to the same different new people all the time. There's to build a database along the way. If you're going to look, if you're going to go through all the effort to speak to these people, at least slow down and ask the content information. The story I want to tell real quick is there's an agent on Myrtle beach at the time, this was years ago. He had 30 agents that would speak to 30 people a day. So his office spoke to 900 people a day. Is that right? 30 times 30. Yeah. Could you imagine that? That's 900 a people a day, dude. Dude, that's a lot of people. 4,500 people a week. And I'm like, what are you doing to have them slow down? I mean, are you asking them to get email addresses? I'm sure you have your dials, contacts, leads, appointments, pendings, closings. What if we just added subscribers? What if we just added, if we tracked how many subscribers would get permission and email addresses from one of these dials? Do you think we could lead that? Will that cost us much? The answer is yes and no, it won't cost that much. You know, he started adding hundreds of permission-based emails of homeowners opted into his newsletter a day through his agents. He has over 100,000 permission-based emails now that would go to his list that was built by turning his humans into like human opt-in forms. So think about that. It's a cool little change. So how much, does, how much does this stuff cost so far that we talked about? We have, you know, reconnecting with your database. Okay. Not that expensive. It's not like some one-year Zillow contract, right? No, it's not much. Number, number two, you just have some awareness. I should probably slow down and like ask for people's contact information when I talk to them. Revolutionary concept, but that compounds, right? So let's move on to the third thing. 
is we probably should have some plan to stay in touch with people, right? So kind of the, 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 the best blend for most people is two helpful educational Q&A videos so people can see you and get to know you a month going out to your list. Let's say on the 1st and the 15th. Gets posted in your blog, sent out by email, goes up on Facebook, and maybe you put a little money into it to boost it to your database, which you can do by uploading your database to Facebook and Facebook will match the emails to user accounts and you can advertise your video to those individuals on Facebook. Um, two, so two helpful Q&A videos a month, you know, digitally out to your list, however you can do it. A monthly piece of direct mail because you're only going to hit at best, at best, 30% of your database digitally. At best. I mean, look at the open rates, you know? Yeah. Look at the open rate of an email. Go look at the organic reach and the paid reach of a Facebook. If you, like if you took your entire custom audience and you look at like how people actually saw it, it's not the whole thing always because the email match rates aren't there. Um, direct mail will hit a lot of the rest. You know, it will show up. There's no spam filter. <laughs> They're not going to shut down your ad. No one's going to outbid you on a price of a stamp. It's very democratic. It's the same cost no matter what email inbox you go into. No one's going to ask you to review, you know, the post office is going to pull your mail piece and say, I need to review this for two days and shut it down saying it's not good enough because you change your terms of service. Yada, 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 yada. <laughs> right? Fair. Yeah. Right. So a monthly piece of direct mail or um, whether it's a postcard or a letter, just saying, here's my latest two educational videos. Call me. Basically same message as the videos before. Um, calling the people that watch the videos. We'll get into that. And then something I want to share with you guys too, if you're following and you're writing this down for like, what is your marketing plan of your database going to be is I really strongly recommend on top of the two educational videos a month, the monthly piece of direct mail out to the list four quarterly direct offers every 90 days, basically. And a direct offer is essentially you send an email to your list saying, Hey, do you want to buy or sell a home now? Tell me right now. It likes designed to spot spike response, right? So I can, I can share some examples out here in a second, but another example of a direct offer is loading your entire database into SurveyMonkey and SurveyMonkey sending an email out saying, Hey, you know, are you thinking about buying or selling a home any, in, within the year? Because we want to kind of forecast demand. Yes or no. And now you know who or something like that. So some type of email that goes out to the list asking for business directly in some way four times a year that's on the foundation of the relationship of the educational videos and touch points you're sending along the way that's the perfect blend maybe throw in a couple of community events and they're gold so what are your thoughts on that recipe kevin i mean that to me i like it it's simple um it's predictive you know it, it's not a, it's not overly complicated um you know, the one question I would ask you with the four direct asks, I mean, is that like on a, you said quarterly, I mean, does it need to be like, Hey, it's October 1st, it's January 1st. Yeah. Like, what, what I mean more about that is that uh, you can't go to your list with a direct offer all the time. Okay. It's like calling up your friends saying, give me business all the time. I mean, you can do it every now and then, but you can't do it all the time. It should land the foundation of a relationship. You know, it's right. like the way I would think about it is your educational videos, your newsletter, your majority of your touch program is kind of like, you know, you showing up over at a friend's house and having a beer with them and chewing the fat. That's kind of the attitude behind your newsletter. Like if I write a newsletter, you get a newsletter from me. It's like, Hey, you're a friend of mine. I want to write you something super helpful and interesting. I thought you'd find cool. And that's pretty much it. Maybe PS I'm here to help. You need me, Right. A direct offer is basically like a door to door salesperson. We're like, you knock on the door and they slightly open the door and you jam your foot in there and you show up with guns ablaze and try to sell something. <laughs> That's a direct offer message. Make sense? So oh. the style is different. So I recommend like, you know, four of those a year, but the rest of that is more of like, you know, the relationship. And here's the thing. This is what's really important to building a big business is your newsletter and your videos and all of those things should not have to justify existence by ROI because it's very difficult to value a relationship. 
they just need to be done because that's how humans relate with each other. It's how you build a relationship at scale through content and having to do it one-on-one. -on -one. And it's just something you have to do. That lays the foundation of trust, which is the first step in the sales process of trust, need, help, and you hurry some along is the foundation of trust. So now you can go with your direct offers, call people up. Do you know anyone who's looking to buy or sell real estate? And they'll give you the time of day and they'll talk to you. It's very difficult going to strangers where there's no relationship with direct or offers all the time. You could do it, but it's a mountain of rejection and it's very painful over time. <laughs> right? It is. Right? Yeah. So that's the thing. I think it would be difficult for your newsletter and your education-based nurture program. If you're trying to justify its existence by ROI, it's a very difficult thing to do. It's like asking what's the return on investment of your mother. <laughs> I would... I don't think I want to meet the person that would know the answer to that. It's high. <laughs> I just know this. It's high. It's just high, right? Yeah, it's, so anyways, it's high. Those are my thoughts. So can I show you a cool direct offer? Let me show you one. I would love it. Yeah. Did, I ever, uh, did you get the, the, the offer one out that I sent you, Kevin? Yes and no. Not in mass. It's out. Oh, hang on. Well, let me show you uh, an example. Are you going to show? Are you showing that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one's sure Ninja. That one. Okay. So, so here's what I'll... In major markets, if you're in a major market, you're probably dealing with iBuyers right now. You know, the instant offers where they skip the agent and just, you know, wholesale their house to a company. Let me share with you my screen and show you an example direct offer, okay? Because I think these are kind of exciting because they've spiked business now, but that's on the foundation of a relationship. All right. So, see my screen okay, Kevin? All right, great. So here's the deal. So Rich Barton, the new CEO of Zillow, says about 10 to 20% of the market will wholesale their house. Or, you know, would respond to an iBuyer top offer, will sell below market value, then I have to do any showings, then you guys go resell it, essentially. All right. So the whole idea is you can offer to maybe shop all the instant iBuyers out there and present all the offers to somebody, kind of like how Trivago or Kayak shop all the other sites, right? And just charge a fee for it. Or, you know, literally people will just want to wholesale their home um, because they don't care. They have the equity. They're like, I, want, I don't want to show anything. I want out of here. I'll sell it for $30,000, $40,000 on market value if I just get this thing gone in seven days. And you as the agent, I want to be very clear, should not be showing up saying, here's what's best for the customer. You, your job is to present the options to the customer, guide them, and let them decide. So at least, you sh I think on every listing presentation, you should have an instant offer option. Sure, set the price floor on what the lowest it'll possibly go for. And say, yes, I got investor relationships that will scoop this home up at a, at a 10, 20% discount in seven days. This is one of the options of many you can choose from, right? Nothing wrong with that. You still get your commission, you know? Um, so anyways, let me go on over here. So that's kind of the concept. So here's the deal. So you would put together this landing page. This is something we do for your viral, but you can literally go to this blog post right here and copy this and all entirely for yourself. I post everything. But here's an example, an easier way to sell your Phoenix home, Kevin. A guaranteed offer within as little seven days on your home. Request your cash offer now. Hey, you want an offer on your house? Well, you can skip the headaches and hassles of selling traditionally. It is what it is. And there's a lot of money looking for a place to rest and companies are happy to make a competitive offer sell it and return to get speed and convenience. And here's all the benefits. But if you're interested in just getting an offer on your home, for the most part, just put your name and phone number and email and address and why you just sell your home time frame and click request offer. That's it. The reality is people don't really read into what this is. All they see is I want to sell my house, get me an offer. They don't really know the nuances of it. Follow me? No, seriously, yeah. that's reality. I'll show you the script to follow. I agree. So down here, Here's the email that would go out to your list from Kevin Kaufman, subject line offer on your home, clients and friends. I got a new option. If you want to skip the hassle of selling your home this summer, I can get an offer on your home from companies who want to buy it, not individual and traditional market. You probably see billboards and radio ads all over this town for stuff like this. Uh, when you call, just let me know whether you prefer maximum value or maximum convenience. This means all the benefits of wholesaling your house. Click here and tell me if you're interested in getting an offer on your home. Now, wouldn't that be nice to get those leads? <laughs> I'll go to my investor relationships uh, and companies who specialize in all this. I can get you an offer in seven days. And here's the leads like what they can come in. Here's the leads. My husband's retiring soon. I need to move very soon. You know, you know, I want to price my home first. Looking to sell in a few months. 
Uh, I have way too much space. I want to downsize in a few months. I'm downsizing will be very soon. I mean, these are solid leads of homeowners that want to sell their home. Kevin, what's really interesting is I can't give this away. I've called real estate agents up that are struggling to make money. And I'm like, can I send this out? And they like won't do it. It's incredible. Um, really? It's a study. This is, this is a great offer. Let me ask you this. So are you, so this is an example of the four times a year thing. So are you, yeah. you so you're cool, saying, dude, hey, like, just look, look at this. Look, hold on, I got to show you this. Look, first name, last name, phone number, email, full address. Why do you need to sell your home? Look at this. All the reasons people wrote why they need to sell. And I get the timeline. These are not like free value report leads, man. These are like actual people who want to sell their house. And that's an example of a direct offer. Sorry, I just had to show you that. And this is the script, by the way. Hang on, Kevin, just, for, just so I can complete my idea for everyone because another asking questions. Let's say you got a call lead, right? Hey, Kevin, hey, you want to sell your house? Great, I'm the agent. Tell me more about your home and situation. I'll get it out to real estate investors and other buyers I know. But Kevin, look, I'll be real with you. It all comes down to price, bro. <laughs> if you're willing to sell your home for a little bit under market value and a return to get convenience, there's a lot of investor demand for that. I'll post your home, let's say, in a local investor meetup group, a few real estate investor Facebook groups. I have the names of a few people who are bidding on sell my home fast, Phoenix, we buy houses, Phoenix. Those guys are paying a fortune cost per click. I can find out who they are, right? Anyways, I'll tell them all about your home and represent you to get the best deal. You know, just pay me a commission. I'll get the price up. Um, but let me ask you, Kevin, this is the most important thing. Could you please answer this for me? Do you want the highest price, which means putting it on the open market with showings, or Kevin, do you prefer the most convenience, which means you'll sell it faster for a little or even maybe a lot, depending upon the condition under market value? Kevin, which would you prefer? Or would you like me to come to your home and help guide you on this decision for a listing appointment tomorrow at three or two or is three better? Yeah, of course, I would rather have you come to my home and get, you know, give me my options. Um, <laughs> sure. yeah, that, that's, the, that's the real estate agent dream right there. Yeah. So, uh, of course, yeah. So that is something where you're coming up with some like that's, that's quarterly four times a year. Yeah. It, could you send that same offer out four times? I mean, I'm assuming it eventually gets stale, but for some time you could probably send that out, right? You get send that out all the time. And if you want to send it more than four, that's fine. I would, that's probably what I would just recommend is what I feel comfortable. But you know, a, a lot of people just don't know how to spike their list for a response. We do. We do. And it's better to do it on a list that has a foundation as some idea who the heck you are, right? With your, your nurturing stuff. But I would say spike your list for response a handful of times full year. Cool. That's a, I mean, that's a, first of all, that's a beautiful example. Great idea. Thank you. Um, so can, do you got a moment? Can we take a question from uh, one of the viewers? Yeah, absolutely. So, so Candice, uh, who happens to be here in the Phoenix area, she's awesome. I know her. She asked for some more examples of some Q&A videos. Like, yeah. what are some content ideas agents can use to create videos with? Yeah, so let me, um, let me pull up YouTube. I'll show you guys how to do this, okay? So give me a second here. Um, okay, so let's say you're trying to come up with some, all right, so let me step back. The better way to answer your question, Kansas, is you wanna supply demand. So when you're creating content, you want to create it for a market. It's like when you're creating a product or service, you want to find the market first and create the product for the market. The way you go broke building a business is like, oh, I have this great idea. Let's create it. And then you go find the market. Bad idea. Start with the market. Got it? So we want to find demand first. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to YouTube. I'm in a YouTube account. I got some stepbrothers, blooper reels. Mario Odyssey for my child. Uh, I love Mark Knopfler. I'm going to see him a concert. My kid likes Monster Jam. Super cool, right? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in sell my home. And let's see what, what comes up. These are the titles for your videos. How do I sell my home fast here in Phoenix? Great topic. How do I sell my home on Zillow without a realtor? Great topic. People are looking for that. How can I sell my home on Facebook? Top Realtor reveals his top tips. How do I sell my home online for free? These are all wonderful topics. How do I know should I sell my home or rent it out here in Phoenix? Aren't these good? This is literally what people are typing in right now into YouTube. Now, let's go, let's go further. Let's have some more fun. Let's just say you want to go into home loan. Um, 
what are the best home loans for first time buyers in Phoenix? Uh, what do I need to know about the home loan process in Phoenix? Home loan in Bangladesh. Interesting. I cannot wait to see Candace's video about home loans in Bangladesh. <laughs> I know that I know Candace and she's going to rock that video. You know, can, can, can I get a home loan with bad credit in Phoenix? See, I'm kind of throwing in the area. Yep. Um, let's type in um, buy a home. I'm buying a homeless man a house. That's interesting. Hmm. That's probably a funny viral video or a heartfelt viral video. You no, know, how do I buy a home with no money down? Uh, how do I buy a home in California if I'm moving from Phoenix? How do I buy a home with Vanlo? These are all just ideas. So you see, all I'm doing is I'm just typing in some keyword terms, home staging. You know, here you know here's what's really interesting. Let me show you something, Kevin. You ready for this? Yeah. Nobody's searching for a real estate agent. The only people Ever. searching for a real estate agent are other real estate agents. I will prove it to you. Are you ready? It's a fact. Real estate agent day in life, beginner career training, salary tips. <laughs> Homeowners ain't typing that in. They're typing in offer on my home. Got it? So Candace, does that help? If you're looking for a place to start, I would start, um, I would start here. That's what people are searching for. I would use the autocomplete on YouTube. I think Charlotte raised her hand, Kevin. That's awesome. Let's see if we can, can you unmute her or? Oh, let's find out. Hang here on. we go. It's coming in through Q&A now. Candace said thank you. Um, I think I allowed Charlotte to talk. Say something, Charlotte, if your microphone's working. This is cool. Technology. It's like an experiment. We'll see how it works. Or not. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Charlotte. How cool is this? Yeah. You're okay. live, Charlotte. Welcome to the show. Oh, I've been here all the time. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to uh, know? My, my question would be, what would you name your, like mine's Charlotte Rose. And sure. I think I, it's named, my YouTube channel is named Charlotte Rose Realtor. Yeah. Would you stick with that? Would you stick? change it to like a Where central you florida on? realtor or Where you based central on florida living um out of orlando area okay so what i would do and there's nothing wrong with what you currently have you just have to make a decision let me give you an example of a client uh this is an individual in silicon valley and we created uh it was easier for him to say is like you know i'm the editor i i published the silicon valley real estate journal you give, your, you give your magazine, you give your publication a name, and that's what you call it. And it's brought to you by, you like that, you, Charlotte. Right. So if I were just to build your blog, let's not worry about Facebook and all the other stuff that kind of complicates things. But if we were to build you a blog and you're going to start sending things out, I would make your own publication just like this, brought to you by you. I would call it the Orlando Real Estate Journal. See what's available. Go buy it. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Seriously. Yeah. No, really. It's a good name. But you see, you'd have your helpful videos here, your call to actions on the right. And this is a way where if you're cold calling on somebody and they don't know who you are from some other agent that's perceived as a commodity because they got 50 agents call them, let's say, or they all seem the same to them. They immediately go to the site and say, oh, this person's different. Not even by watching the videos, right, Charlotte? And it's the whole like, you know, money flows to differences, not similarities argument. Just make sure you're different. Well, our webpage for the office is well, my name would be Charlotte dot my Orlando area home search. Yes, that's for your home search site, but this would be something separate for your total, uh, for your total brand. I would go, I would focus on this to build your personal brand with sellers and hopefully name it something just for that publication's direction I would go for. So, and, oh, and, helps. Frank, just to just to make sure, um, I'm putting this back into my language so I so I can understand it better. It's because this is we're building a relationship with these people that are going to see this. They're going to arrive at this website, see this video. Yeah, what, you're really right? targeting homeowners, past clients, and sphere. Uh, generally speaking, and this is very general. You have an unbranded buyer search site that does not tell anyone you're a realtor because they don't want you. They want the house, and then you more or less kind of trick them to opt in to save their searches, and then you call them. That's how buyer lead generation works on your home search sites, right? Generally speaking, you downplay the fact you're a realtor and you focus on just search for the darn house and put your information in and make it, that's it. Again, you just want to see pictures, right? The other sites, your home seller site, 
which is like testimonials and reviews and videos and newsletters. And here's like my expertise for sale to consult you and guide you on a home sale. Um, your blog would be much more geared toward that. Got it. That makes total sense. Um, dude, that's huge. So uh, I'm going to give people a few more minutes to, to ask a few questions if they have any. Um, but Frank, what else should we be thinking about? Hey, like we're going to, we're going to, one of the things I like about this is when we were talking about doing this webinar, you said, Hey, protect your, like, this is about protecting yourself from disruption, protecting yourself from, oh, yeah. from kind yeah. of the eye buyers or whatever else is yeah. going on in yeah. the industry today. Um, yeah. because you're building a relationship with these people. Um, like what else should, should we be thinking of today? Cause I'm asking you, man, because you're, you're a relationship guy, but you're a direct yeah. response guy too. Like I you am. understand marketing at a high level. You have, you have to understand both. I would much rather send a direct offer out to a list of relationships than a cold list. You get much better response. It's kind of like, you know, marketing to the people who visit your website or your warm audiences on Facebook before a cold audience, right? But here's, if you were to ask me that question, what should be people be thinking about from a 10,000 foot view? I'm going to say something that might make me sound smart because it's a fancy word. I'm not that smart. I'm not saying it to sound smart, but it actually is a word that I, I want people to study and maybe if I can point you in the direction to help deal with all of the disruption. Everyone's trying to put real estate out of business. Now, I don't think real estate just go to business. I think it's an issue of broker profitability. I think profitability of brokerage is under question. But the agents that are facing the client and have the relationships, there will always be a market for good agents. Because some people just don't want to deal with the account rep, let's say, as doing 50 closings at Zillow for their home someday. Right? So with that being said, to answer your question, Kevin, I would ask everyone to go study price elasticity of professional services. I know that sounds crazy, but hear me out. Price elasticity. For example, a Versace handbag costs lots of money, I understand. I wouldn't know, but they're very expensive, Kevin. It sounds expensive. <laughs> it does, okay? This handbag if I were to put it at Walmart or the Caesar form shops, it's the same bag, Kevin, but do you think they will command the same price? Say no. Nope. No, because the only difference, the product is exactly the same. Literally. The only difference is the positioning of the one in the Vegas form shops creates the feeling the buyer wants to buy and how they feel when they purchase. That's it. Hmm. You're buying a feeling. It is not the product. And once you understand that, you start getting into like institutional branding and why the commercials aren't even about the products. <laughs> okay. But price elasticity always comes down to how you make somebody feel. Now, if we understand that, when you study price elasticity of professional services, whereas how does someone buy the intangible when they don't necessarily know and are educated to know, they go on clues, <laughs> okay? And the clues would be is how does this person make me feel certain and confident that all of my needs are going to be met? And the agent that creates the better feeling with the prospect and makes them feel certain, reinforcing all their existing biases, if you have to, that they are going to do a better job, you're going to eke out the premium on the commission. You're going to get the transaction fee without the question. You're going to be picked from the other real estate agents because the money comes down to being the better marketer of what you do, not necessarily being the better doer of what you do. Yep. Um, that makes a, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. I can, I can, I can relate to that. Um, Hey, we got a good question from Michael. Who's a new, who, who's a new agent. Um, and he capitalized the word new. So it must be really, it's important. He's new, like, cause he's probably going through this whole, Hey, I'm new. Like, what do I do to get started? He's trying to come up with his personal brand. And he, want, he said he wanted to use the words, Mike, the realtor, but was told by yeah, he can't. A, yeah. an expert that he can't do that. Cause it'd be like, Bob the builder. Well, he didn't yeah, want to but also realtor, I think is trademarked and they like, like how you're allowed to use it. 
That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. There's that whole legal piece of that. Yeah. Like don't ever say March Madness. So you'll get sued. It's March Mayhem. Is March Madness is trademarked? Or, yeah. I mean, I guess that's why, you, and it's also why you can't say Super Bowl. You can't even say the word Super Bowl. I don't think you can. Um, it's it's yeah. the big, you have to say the big game. So, okay. So someone like this, would they want to, Michael, he's a newer agent. He wants a personal brand. Does it need to be his name or can it be something more specific? And, and Michael, if you're still listening, maybe you can type in another question uh, to give us a little more, uh, you know, a, a little more of the oh, man, that's response a great question. there. But from a personal branding standpoint, yeah. um, what should we be thinking about? I guess new or not, some of us have been in the business a long time and don't really have so, a personal brand. So here's the reality. Let's just look at the reality. I mean, first off, make sure you're looking for examples of professional services and not businesses. Professional services play by a different set of rules than a business. That's a very important distinction. So go on Amazon and go buy some books on marketing professional services, selling professional services. You'll find the answers you're looking for as opposed to reading a book on marketing for business. It's a much more niche concept on selling the intangible. Now, with that being said, picking a name, well, I mean, Steve Wynn has his name on a multi-billion dollar casino. That seems fine, right? MGM was the name of three guys. We don't know their names. You know, you have, you know, Bain is a consulting company, McKinsey's a consulting company. You know, those are names of the founders. I mean, Keller Williams is the name of the two people that started it, the last names. I, you can certainly have your name. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And when you start off, yeah, it's going to be people are buying you. But eventually, as your business grows, they will start buying not just you personally, but more about what you represent with regards to the systems and the standards and the feeling you're able to convey through your staff, through the culture, and those types of complex, more complex business concepts. So the answer, what to name it, whatever you want. I don't think it makes a difference. But in the beginning, yeah, people will be hiring just you. But as things grow, it'll be more they're hiring your firm. It was really cool. I remember the day when someone signed up for viral marketing, and uh, they didn't know who I was. That would be like someone taking a listing with you, and they don't know who you are as a listing agent, never heard of you. That was the day we shifted from people who were hiring Frank to now they're hiring the firm. And that was a pretty cool thing that yeah, took us, you know, years to get there. It's much different, right? I mean, that, that is a completely paradigm. That's a paradigm shift uh, for you as a business. Um, okay. So we've only got a couple minutes left here. We both have got to go. Um, Mike, I think, you know, again, uh, you know, Frank was great advice. You said, go grab a couple uh, service uh, marketing books off of Amazon. Is there any that you recommend personally that maybe Michael will take a look at if he really wants some help even uh, diving deeper on um, yeah. figuring out his brand? Yeah, I, I think what you would really enjoy is there's a book on Amazon. I, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but it's, um, marketing professional services. I, I think I've been I've been giving a lot more of that advice to people on like. Uh, how do I make sense of like, where do I even look to find information that is applicable to me? And I think the lesson is, is that study professional services, how to market it, how you sell the intangible and go on Amazon and buy some books on like marketing and how a professional service firm runs. And I think you'll find a lot of similarities of, you know, how a CPA firm works, how a um, engineering firm, how a law firm, how all those professionals get started. There's lots of clues there. Consulting firms, of how to start as a real estate agent, you know, as a, as a consultant where people are ultimately paying for your advice, not just being the gatekeeper to the MLS, which is being that, which is being removed. Right. It's a great point. All right, dude, we got like a couple minutes left. What are one or two, three, one or two things you want to leave us with um, that we haven't talked about yet? Um, one of the ways for anyone to get some immediate leads from their database initially is round up all your archives in your system, all maybe the old leads that didn't convert, and just send them a short email message. And the subject line says, quick question. And in the email is nothing more than, are you still interested in buying a home and, or selling a home in Phoenix? In your case, it's Kevin, with your signature. And it's a very quick way to be able to command a response and hopefully get some deals. If I was stranded naked and had nothing in the desert and had to build all over from scratch, 
I would start calling up real estate professionals that were probably spending a lot of money on pay-per-click that had a lot of old leads and say, Kevin, if I get a deal out of that database, can you split it 50-50? And Kevin's going, sure, Frank. Great. <laughs> Give me the list. Write the little one-sentence email. Press the send button. There we go. That's what I would do. And, That's uh, awesome. Everybody but Candace do that. Candace, don't do that because I'm sure so, uh, your leads are all on my database too. So no doing that, Candace. But everybody else outside of Phoenix, send that email today. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a really good message. Um, the second thing I would think about is um, in every market, I'm sure people really want to raise their average sales price where, you know, they kind of go a little more after the affluent. Um, Absolutely. Here's what I would do. Let me just leave this last tip. Um, go on the MLS and organize it by like literally the most expensive homes at the very top. <laughs> All right. And see if any of them are vacant. Call a listing agent up and say, hey, I want to bring some people by, um, you know, they're business owners and like luxury businesses that might know a buy for the home. Is that cool? Sure. Right. Um, so now you base them a place to meet at this super sick home in your case, like on Camelback Mountain or something like that, that overlooks everything that's vacant and worth like millions of dollars. So then what I would do is I'd open the phone book or find the phone book. <laughs> I don't know. Yelp. Oh, I'm dating myself. Hey, Frank, the rest of us have phones where we could just go get the phone number from. We'd, we'd open an app. Yeah. But, I'd go to the okay. phone book, you know, some yeah. of the facts. No, but you'd, you'd, you'd go find, let's say, for example, a super expensive landscaper. Uh, business owner. You go find a super premium home theater install. I would find a, um, someone that does like the most expensive remodeling gigs in the city. I would find uh, somebody that, you know, rents those exotic cars. Maybe there's an exotic car rental place at your, that where you live. Um, I don't know. High end artwork dealer. Things rich guys buy, you know, like the super rich, top stuff. The rich guy. Right? Stuff I yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Expensive art. Right. So, go call up those businesses and say, look, you know, we're all selling to the upper crust in town, you know, the highest of the, of the most luxury. What if we all got together and just started talking and meeting and got to know each other and learn about each other's businesses and do a little mastermind where maybe if, you know, you have a 10 minutes in a hot seat, you say, here's a challenge for dealing with my business. We all help you. Then, you know, you share a challenge and give us in your business and we all help you get those people together um, and go meet at a luxury listing every month or two doesn't cost you much. It's a small group of six, eight people, right? You can bring massive value to them. And do you think those people that sell luxury probably are going to know someone who's buying or selling? The answer is absolutely yes, right? And maybe you can do a video with them and they share it with their customer list. You do a video with them, they share it with their customer list. It's probably the least expensive, honestly, pretty enjoyable way to start breaking into luxury without having to spend a fortune and outspend the competition, spending you know, $100 on mail pieces to get in front of these people, right? Um, I would look at starting a little luxury mastermind in your market if you want to raise your sales price. And it's a good way to build your list of those people, but also if you can, giving access to their list by doing some co-marketing with them in some way. That's pretty solid, dude. All right, guys, uh, we are going to wind it down because Frank and I both have commitments uh, to be done by the top of the hour. And uh, Frank, I just want to say thanks a ton. If anybody on the webinar wants, uh, I know you said no selling, so I'm just going to sell for you. I'm not even going to sell for you. I just want to know, like, if someone wants to check out what yeah. you guys are doing, more of your examples, you, you showed us a couple, uh, a couple of those, those blog pages that you guys build. Yeah. If someone wanted to see that, where, where do they go? Well, just go to our website. It's get viral, V Y R A L.com. We have all right. the examples on there. You can request a strategy call. Our sales team is not on commission. And um, the money back guarantee on the first 30 days to test us out to see if you can like working with us. But uh, if you're interested in some help for the execution of these things, um, we can do it systematized and for a lot cheaper. You know, the pricing is on the website than hiring someone part-time minimum wage on staff or less expensive than that. So check it out. Thanks, Kevin. Awesome. And if you'd like to learn more about Frank, because he's an interesting dude. <laughs> Um, I had him on my podcast in the last couple of weeks. So check us out on Kevin and Fred's next level podcast. Look up Frank. He's probably in the last three or four episodes released. Um, fascinating conversation. The guy's a wealth of information when Thank it you. comes to I appreciate it. Thanks for having marketing. Me. No problem. And all things, uh, all things fun. So Frank's thanks a ton, dude. I appreciate your time and uh, we'll talk again soon. Thanks Kevin. We'll see you all right, guys. Viral marketing. Take a look. And uh, thanks. Thanks to them.
Appreciate it.